So do you do anything else other than writing? Uh, yeah, I am a teacher. I teach uh, second grade and love the students. And they helped me really inspire what I was doing with Ring Dragons. I was able to base a lot of the characters on students that I had had and people that I had met. Like my wife really is based on the, the girl and my. I'm based on one of the characters, Walsh. Her little brother, Emmanuel, is based on, uh, on uh, Henry Lee. And then there was a little boy who went to Antonio Del Bono. His name was uh, Ricky Stewart. And he was like the perfect character for uh, Peter. Peter, and uh, he became the Peter character. And so all these people I kind of knew, I infused my ideas onto them, and they became characters in the book. So I used my teaching experiences you know, in, in the writing and in, even in the Ring Dragons. So where did you get the inspiration for your book? I think you kind of answered that in the other questions, but. Well, not necessarily. I, I uh, was inspired to write Ring Dragons based on a dream. I actually had a dream, and it was back in 2001. And 2001 was, I'm going to be honest with you, and your viewers in Lizard Zone was a hard, very hard year for me. Uh, I lost my aunt. Uh, she was a teacher and a fabulous lady. She was 50 years old, and she was murdered. And uh, 2001 was also the year we had 9-11 attacks. And those two incidents were within one week of each other, my aunt's death and the 9-11 attacks. So my whole family was just heartbroken and mourning that whole time. And uh, I'll tell you something truthfully as a quick aside. Her name, my aunt's name, was Charlotte Nadine. Yeah. And my little baby sister, only 17 years old, just had a baby and named her Charlotte Nadine. And she was born just this past June 26th. My aunt Char's birthday was June 26th. So they shared the name and the birthday. And it kind of really brought a lot of uh, healing back to the hearts of my family because we were really upset about her loss. And, uh, but I wanted to share that quick aside. But, 2001, the year when I came up with the idea for Ring Dragons, I was asleep and I woke up after just having this incredible dream. And basically the very last two, three chapters as it appears in the book is exactly what I saw in my head in that hmm. dream where you've got this ferocious dragon attack and this huge twist and surprise, which I'm not gonna give away. <laughs> and all of that just came to me in the form of a dream. And I really wanted to share that story. So I kind of built that dream into a whole, you know, a whole plot and we turned it into Ring Dragons. And in 2008, August of 2008, we're coming up on the one year uh, published date, I debuted Ring Dragons. And it's starting to make circulation. It's starting to get reviewed by like the Midwest Book Review and getting into uh, the hands of reviewers. So I'm hopeful that it's gonna keep moving up maybe towards a major distribution someday because it's a fantastic story. And uh, I really want it to be shared with people. Huh. I think it's good. I read it. Thank Pretty you. Good book. Enjoy. Now it. I hear you're going to be doing a convention at the end of this month. Yeah, I will. It's in Ontario, California, which is in Southern California. I'm I thought gonna Ontario go. was in Canada. I I could go to Canada, but it's too cold for me. I still have this. <laughs> so they moved Ontario to California for you. Thankfully, it was like, it's can good, you good. just take that city that. and you know drop it down a few degrees yeah. warmer to Southern California? But anyway, yeah, so Ontario, California, it's the homeschool convention, it's called CHN, it's a, a national homeschool expo for all homeschoolers across the country, they get together, and uh, I'll be doing a talk on uh, education, and, but also on the ring dragons, and doing some fun exercise with dragon slime, and kind of cool experiments, but uh, I'll also be there to promote the book, and to be a vendor to sell the book also, and uh, that's coming up. Uh, the 31st. Starts 31st? the 31st at the Marriott in Ontario, California. So if you're around Lizard Zone people, you know, drop by, see Mr. Rangers. <laughs> so your book is kind of kind of like Godzilla, in a way. <laughs> There's a Godzilla reference in the book. Yeah, the fact it's pretty the uh, Godzilla. Yeah. Godzilla like. Yeah. Well, you, you like read it. I I love Godzilla. In fact, I saw Godzilla in 1985. Do you remember that movie? I remember Godzilla in 1985. That was. I mean, that? I wasn't born yet, but. Yeah, I know, but I, I mean, you saw later. it on DVD <laughs> years later. Well, I was a kid. <laughs> In 1985, my mom took it, to, took me to see it, and it was, I think, I want to say Raymond Burr was in it. Raymond Burr was in it, yeah. And Raymond Burr, was, of course, was in the original uh, Ch Japanese adaption. But I loved uh, the whole concept of the, you know, the nuclear mutation that causes this giant lizard and that kind of thing that destroys Japan. And there's a lot of, you can feel uh, in the last sequences, a lot of references to that in Ring Dragons. But it, there is a major plot twist that makes this different, which you know and I know, and I'm not going to give away. <laughs> so. Yeah. But you could find out. <laughs> you can find out by reading <laughs> David's book. So what did you think of the, the most current Godzilla movie, the American one? Godzilla was that, when 1999. Did it come out? Oh, you know, sadly, I think I did maybe accidentally watch that. <laughs> and it, didn't, it didn't do it for me like it did in 1985 when I thought it was just fantastic. But 
I think there was one scene, I think you and I talked about this at one point, where the Japanese like business tycoon is up in his like penthouse and Godzilla's coming right at him. And this is where I really miss those. Remember the googly eyes in the 70s Godzilla? He had like those big oh, yeah, you know, googly those crazy eyes, eyes. like cookie monster or something. That's what I really needed to see was him like staring and Godzilla, he comes <laughs> in and just smashes the building. <laughs> He's just like, oh, you know, but anyway, that was. Yeah, and there's the guy just standing there looking at Godzilla very with austere. a tear in his eye. Yeah, no, I was like, I created you and, you know, but it was, <laughs> I, even though I had, you know, it was in Japanese, I kind of, oh, yeah, I that felt was, something. Was that, was that Final Wars or yeah. <laughs> Godzilla Final Wars, I think it was called? Yeah, yeah. but yeah. I felt that one, and then you it was felt, like, you felt for Godzilla right there. Yeah, no, I know. There was a connection between the, the the business tycoon and Godzilla. I was just like, <laughs> that got me. <laughs> so, did you like any of the other monsters besides Godzilla? There's like Mothra or uh, no, King Kong. Not really. Didn't didn't uh, none of that stuff. Did. Well, King Kong is different. That's kind of an iconic thing. But I didn't really do any of the Ultraman or uh, you know the different variations of Godzilla. But King Kong, I know Peter Jackson made it recently into a film, which I thought was. Uh, Good, but very CG heavy. I, yeah. At some point, I got a little too lost in the CG, and I, I just, I, I was not in that world anymore. I don't know. But uh, the original King Kong is fantastic, and it just, it captures all the wonder about, you know, this incredible power and force that is like, you know, otherworldly. Yeah. So. Yeah, you have this great Willis O'Brien clay animation. Yeah. Boy, you just pulled a reference to God over my head. <laughs> <laughs> His, his dinosaurs are going to be behind us. Yeah, really? Back there, you can see them. <laughs> you ever watch Family Guy in here? No. Really? No, oh, I, I don't Family watch Guy. TV. That's a funny show. I only watch myself on TV. <laughs> in the beginning, nobody cares. Nobody cares what you're doing. And they don't even know why you're doing it, you know? And you have to persevere through that and know what you're doing is important to you and it's important to everybody else. And and that's hard sometimes. You, you get the, as a, as a young person, and I've experienced this even as an adult, you get the feeling, well, there's six billion people on this planet, and here I am trying to write a story or draw a comic book or do something like that or write some music, and nobody cares. You know? And you just fight through that and realize that you are contributing something to the world, and you're doing your, your best to do that. So just keep practicing to be the best you can be, to do the best you can. You know? hmm. That's good advice. Thank you. <laughs>